Welcome to Cody Catch Up. My name is Jamie Jones, and in this video, we're going to be checking out Hanami, which is a new Ruby framework. So it's basically a contender for Rails, uh, but they're doing things a little bit differently. And so basically, I thought, why not just clone it down or install it and just see what a bare bones project is like and do some kind of quick comparisons with that. So this is Hanami. You can find it at hanami.rb. Sorry, hanami.rb.org. And we're going to go through and just see everything, what's, what it's like, because it is 1.0. It's still very early days, uh, but it has been like this for a while now. So I'm going to go and install Hanami. Great, that's installed. And that's actually create a new application using their example here. Okay, great. So we've got a bunch of files here. I think we'll actually just go through these uh, in Vim itself. So let's uh, CD into Bookshelf. Vim, let's open out a sidebar. So let's go to the gem file first and just see what uh, what everything's kind of comprised of. So we've got rake as a dependency here, uh, very much, very common for uh, Ruby applications these days. We have Hanami itself and then Hanami model, which is the database back stuff. Then we have the PG gem, which is actually used for, uh, for basically communicating with Postgres itself. It's the, the glue, the bridging kind of uh, gem. Then in our development environment, uh, we have Shotgun, which is for hot reloading uh, the code. And then in our test and development environments, we have .env, which is for using to load .env files. So if you've ever uh, worked on a project that uses environment variables, it gets kind of frustrating if, if you have to export them in your terminal all the time. So there are tools and a lot of frameworks and stuff have this now. Uh, and you, in particular in Ruby, we have .env, uh, which is a gem that will actually look into your root directory and see if there's a .env file and it will load that up based on the environment. Or you can just have a .env for everything and you can actually use form and which will read that when it loads up as well. Uh, and this allows you to use environment variables in a clean, safe way without mucking up anything else on your system. So next up in test, we have mini test, which is built into, or at least comes with uh, Ruby 2, uh, I think it was Ruby 2 or 2.1 came in so you don't need to use RSpec. It does have an RSpec like syntax as well if you want to use that version, otherwise you can use test unit. Then we have Capybara for all our front end testing. And here it looks in, like in production you can use the Puma server if you want to. Uh, and that's kind of my default these days. If we go into the config ru file, and it's basically just loading up the Hanami app itself as well as the environment. So let's go through to the config environment have a look here. So including the bundler, Hanami, the model itself, then the actual application uh, and the website of the application. So this is this is kind of interesting. So if I go back a little bit here and you'll see on the left hand side, we've got apps, config, db, lib, public, spec. And then if we go into apps, we've got apps web. Uh, this probably doesn't show it too well, but it's actually apps folder then web. Uh, and this is something that I'm seeing in uh, Phoenix applications itself. So Phoenix has this approach now, especially since uh, at least 1.3, so the latest version of Phoenix has this similar approach as well. So you're actually having different apps. So previously you might have a web portion, you might have an API portion, that all be split up. And it's basically separating those concerns into their own little sections, which is nice to see. So that's a bit of a difference from Rails itself where it'll have app, app and then all of the app related logic. Uh, so an interesting look and change on that. So back in our environment file, now we're defining, or oh, we're actually mounting the application here at slash. So that's very much like how you mount engines in Rails. So that's interesting to see how they're mounting the actual web application part. I'd assume you could then do like web API or something at slash API. Uh, that'll be interesting to see and really nice if they actually do that. Next up is the model. So we're just defining everything for the database. So we're just specifying the, the adapter, getting the database URL, uh, which that database URL, I'm assuming, I actually haven't looked at the docs for this, but it will probably be something like uh, we actually specify the username, password, everything in a single string, uh, instead of actually specifying everything like a username, password, etc. Uh, the next we have is our migration is just including where those are, same with the schema. And then we have our mailers, we're just, just specifying where our mailers are in development, so just setting up the, the debugging levels, and then our mailer environment settings for actual production. 
It's a very minimal kind of uh, setup for the environment file. There's not too much there, uh, but it's showing that its simplicity really is key here. And there's not a lot that you really do need uh, for at least booting the application, getting it going. I'd say it's, it's similar-ish to Rails kind of application setup, although it is split up into other files, but very, very similar setup in terms of uh, how simple it is laid out. So now let's just have a quick look at lib and see if there's anything in here. We've got our bookshelf, just defining it as a module. Uh, then we've got our entities, mailers, and repositories. So the re repositories are actually like database. Uh, so you, where all your model stuff goes, uh, and I believe entities might be related. I have to check that one out. Again, this is just a first look for me as well. Public, very much where we, very much the same as Rails. That's where you point things at. Uh, spec, we can see here we have a spec helper. Uh, very standard there, just loading up mini tests and a features helper. So we're loading in Capybara and the DSL, and then basically passing that in, allowing mini tests to be able to use that DSL so we can do those that front end testing. Uh, so let's go across to the app slash webs folder. And as you can see, we've got views, templates, controllers, nothing in there, config, which have our routes. Uh, let's have a look at our route here. So we've got an example route, which looks like it's just sending a 200 response, so saying everything's okay, and then actually just rendering text, so no templates or anything like that. Uh, and it's actually passing the environment with it. Now, this is something I find really interesting is passing the environment around. Uh, it's very much similar to what I've seen in Phoenix, because I've been playing around with Phoenix and Elixir a bit. Uh, that passing the connection around, so the connection's kind of like the, the main important thing and passing that through, because it makes testing and a bunch of other things a lot easier. So they're doing something similar here with environment for, uh, environment uh, itself. Uh, so if we go into application.rb, click that one, uh, we're loading the helpers and the assets, and then we're going through our application. So this is our web application. Uh, and we can see here we're manually loading uh, things in, so we're loading the controllers and the views, uh, which is pretty interesting to know that there's no kind of auto loading there. Loading our routes, uh, which is really nice to see here is you actually specify the scheme, so whether it be HTTP, HTTP or HTTPS, uh, and then setting all the host up here. This is it's quite a nice take on, instead of having like a bunch of YAML files and, and, and other kind of configuration going around, uh, we got cookies, we can set everything up there. Let's have a look, what else have we got? Uh, body passes, can force SSL to make sure that, H that HTTPS is always used. Uh, we're setting the actual layout that's gonna be used by all the views, and I'm assuming that should be nicely overridable. Uh, same, we're specifying the relative path to the templates directory. Assets. Uh, they've got a bunch of ones they've got built in. You can switch out to use something like Uglify, UI, UI, Clojure. Uh, that's quite nice there. What else have we got? Style sheet, same thing. Uh, we've got our assets, sources. So you can have multiple sources there. Security, this is an interesting thing. So this is something they talked about back, if I go back here. Uh, secure by default. So deploy applications that rely on the latest browser technology such as content security policy or CSP. X-frame headers automatic escaping to protect your users against the most common security threats. Uh, this is something you don't see too often in frameworks and it's nice to see uh, actually being included there and actually leaving links to uh, all the various security articles and, and so you can find out more about these. So it's giving a little bit of education as well. Again, a whole bunch of uh, CSP stuff and yeah, it's really nice to see. Like a lot of this, you probably actually won't need to change. A lot of it looks pretty much like the defaults of what you need. Uh, and you just have to tweak it to suit your own kind of uh, needs there. But I think for most people, you won't need to touch that. Uh, basically, again, just preparing the views, going through the environments about that. Not too much there. So it's a 326 line file for the web application itself. Uh, but that, it's not really that big. Like if you look at it and, and see what's going on there, if you take all the comments out, it's actually pretty small, uh, which is good to see that it, it's keeping it fairly simple, but still allowing it to be more of a robust framework. So as we can see, we go into views. So views load, and then we're including the actual web layout. So from what I can see here, this is very much, very similar to uh, Phoenix itself, where you're actually loading a view first. Uh, with Rails, we're actually seeing view as the, the view for that little bit that you're loading, and that's all your markup and stuff like that inside, whereas this isn't quite the case. 
uh, in this one. So then from here, view would then go into the template, uh, very much like Phoenix from what I can see. Uh, so that might allow doing some more decoration and stuff like that in place. Then we have a template, which is just plain old ERB. Very, very similar. We're seeing our yield here and the loading in the favicon by default, which is nice. Uh, so basically that's it. So it's a pretty small kind of framework. It does feel very much like, uh, like Sinatra itself. Uh, a very simple application, but still very robust. There's a lot there that we're not seeing. That's handled by Hanami itself as well as Hanami model. So I think I'll need to dive in this deeper and actually start working on more of uh, an actual application and doing some comparisons there. From my kind of first first thoughts, first touches on it, I think it's, I wouldn't say it's for beginners. I think there's a bit more involved here, a bit more already known knowledge about how the web works when you're looking at something like this. So it might be a little bit more daunting for someone who's very new. Uh, so it might be something worth uh, just evaluating and, and seeing how you go, but I really do think it's more pitched at, at least in my opinion, uh, to intermediate to experienced developers that know a little bit more about what's going on. There are some parts which I think you're not gonna have to worry about, but it, it, as you can see with the content security policies and stuff like that, that's, that's more of an advanced topic uh, for anyone who's creating things. And I see a lot of fairly new developers starting off with Ruby now, uh, and they're actually going for Rails, and I think this might be a bit more hands-on than what they're used to. Now, there are, there is definitely positives for that and, and, and benefits, but I, I think that's gonna be something that's more of a stumbling block for people who are new. Uh, but that's essentially it. Uh, I'd love to know if you've been playing around with this for a while now. Have you got anything, uh, any kind of wise comments or words or anything that I may have interpreted wrong, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, but I think I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this one to actually creating a basic application with Hanami and going through that and then doing another comparison again to Rails, maybe in a side-by-side -side, uh, working. So I'd love to know if you wanna see that, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, leave a like too, uh, that'd be awesome. So I know if, if this is something or more of a video you wanna kinda of see progress more and, and go forward in the future. But other than that, please subscribe if you're enjoying it. Uh, and yeah, check out the podcast if you haven't checked that out. That's at codycatchup.com or you can find it on iTunes at Codycatchup. Uh, that's essentially it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.